welcome to Sheffield and to the Nuclear Manufacturing Summit for 2021. It is brilliant to see so many of you here this morning. It's not intended to be a normal event. We've got speakers from large reactors, small reactors, advanced reactors, decommissioning, fusion, and even, uh, even defense. So we've, got, we've covered the whole spectrum of, of the nuclear sector. The AMRC Training Centre has now trained over 1,700 apprentices, with over 600 studying right now from Advanced Level 3 to Postgraduate Degree Level 7. If you want to have as low carbon a mix as, as we're going to need for the future, then nuclear is an important part of it. Nuclear is absolutely different to every other industry in engineering, in manufacturing. Those stats speak for themselves. We've played a leading role on the delivery of um, nuclear power plants across the world. The mantra that we are driving to increase confidence in the people who buy this product, to increase confidence in the people who regulate this product is this. Affordable, repeatable, deliverable. The philosophy for U battery is actually quite different. That extreme resilience of the fuel allows us to think about things in a very, very different way. How can we make advanced technology, and in particular molten salt, really drive down the cost of nuclear? So that's one of our driving ambitions. It will be a collaboration. You know, there's no one organisation that can actually develop and solve all of the problems themselves. In some ways, the real challenge we've got to deliver here is to bring together the existing fusion knowledge of UKAA with the existing delivery knowledge of industry. That's the, the guts of this thing. The moment has come for you to grill uh, many of our speakers from this morning. There are still potential power and propulsion applications of nuclear technology that may meet evolving military objectives beyond submarines. We've got to be able to make changes to our product to meet actually the demands of our Navy. You know, what do they actually have to compete against with our adversaries? We are currently working through the current stockpile of warheads and uplifting them in order to make sure that they live to the end of their lives. Some things that have been weaved through some of the other presentations about capacity and capability, because it seems to me that as a nuclear industry and all its shapes and hues are all potentially going to be fighting amongst ourselves for the capacity in the supply chain. I think if you look at the World Nuclear Association's latest numbers, 440 operational power plants, 180 are now shut down. I am pleased now uh, to welcome all of our uh, speakers back to the stage, please, for a panel which will Andy, St Andy Storer will chair. What I'd like to do is to thank all of our panel members and all of our speakers today. I know that some of you will be joining us for dinner a little bit later. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. Go forth and enjoy your evening. Today, we move from talking about those opportunities and the developments that are happening across our waterfront, whether it's power generation, defence or decommissioning, into some of the interventions that need to, make, to, to be made to get action moving. Scientists around the world are clear that the world climate objectives will not and cannot be met if nuclear technologies are excluded. And I think when we, when we should be thinking about the future of the UK and levelling up, one of the key ingredients we should be considering is, is the strength that research universities give. 
What I would emphasize is, to be successful, you will need all stakeholders to work together. As Ali from Siemens said last night in his after dinner speech, leave the stripes at the door, be open and honest in your cooperation, and that will enable optimum solutions to the problems that you're facing as an industry. So our main focus at the moment is on identifying uh, the numbers and types of skills that we need in the sector. We've got better at that in terms of the large-scale uh, nuclear. We now have an opportunity to have a bit of a wider discussion and for you to put your questions uh, to our speakers this morning. Already, nuclear makes up a significant portion of supply. Last year, nuclear provided over 16% of the country's electricity supply. As we've said earlier, and through the last couple of days, I imagine, the nuclear sector deal needs to evolve, which has required a rebaselining of the sector deal to better align it with policy and net zero legislation. Just about a quarter of the businesses that we work with are purely nuclear or work within the nuclear sector. There's not really that many businesses around that just work in, in the nuclear sector. We can't be myopic. We can't be short-sighted in what we're doing. So we need a research, development and innovative environment to take us forward, to be resilient and sustainable. It's really important that we keep up some momentum and so this is a great opportunity to be here to talk with all of you about um, really some of the opportunities that are coming up and how we can keep that going. Lots and lots of opportunities really to to exploit, I suppose, and, and gather together and really drive that advanced manufacturing piece forward for the uh, future nuclear programme. Ask for names and others uh, within the company um, and invite them to visit you. Make it easy for them to, to, to remember your business. Thank you for attending. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have got any feedback, let us know. Thank you to every one of you for coming and to those of you who couldn't get in for tuning in. Thanks very much, folks. Safe journeys home.